George started running. He ran all the way to the touchdown. I ran all the way down there with him. Then he started running back to our sideline. And I was too tired to keep running all the way chasing him. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just catch him when I catch him on the sideline. Yeah. yeah, he threw everything off. And then he dipped on the sideline, too. He yeah. ran down the whole field. Okay. <laughs> Did yeah. you ever catch up to him? <laughs> No, <laughs> I tried to make that turn, but I was like, okay, I'll just catch you when we get over there. Warren turned on his feed, 63 yards on the run by Jalen Warren. Steelers crazy. It is officially Victory Tuesday. You love to see it. And you're hanging out with this sick podcast, Steeler Crazy. You know what we're doing on Tuesdays, Mike. The one and only Jalen Warren show had himself a great game. And let's give a special shout out to our sponsor over at Steel City Wheelhouse. If you want to bring that up for me. Steel City Wheelhouse, where the bar is set. Tires for all cars and trucks can now be purchased online at SteelCityWheelhouse.com. Financing is available. Go and get your car souped up. You need some rims. You need some new tires. You need some custom auto work. Go see John. Both John's over there. Just all around great people. Just doing some great things over there in good old Washington, PA. Uh, Go check them out. Steel City Wheelhouse. They're going to be riding with us all season. No doubt. No doubt. And you're right. We're happy to have a show today falling away. We can all kind of exhale Jalen included I'm sure it doesn't matter how sexy it is it doesn't matter how flashy it is and a handful of weeks nobody will remember how they got the win you just remember that it's a W and we got a W coming up for you today of course with the Jalen Warren and French show let's talk to the man himself number 30 Jalen Warren you what's up Jalen it's good man we're happy to have you on another great Tuesday gonna break everything down of course and First and foremost, we just talked about a sigh of relief. How's how's the victory feel today? Oh, it feels great. It feels great. You know, you you feel the you feel the aftermath of you know the game, the you know the soreness of the game, but it always feels better with the victory. You gotta tell me about the crowd last night, man. We weren't in the building. Uh, just watching on TV, it, it felt so intense. Towels waving, obviously you shining, defense balling out. How much fuel does that add to the fire? Oh, it adds a lot. Like just seeing all them yellow towels waving, it's it's something I have never seen before, and it's crazy. Like witnessing that, especially being out there and being able to be a factor in the you know uh, those game changing moments. That definitely like adds fuel to the fire. Seeing all that, you know, a pump crowd, you know, just everything, everyone being uh, there together, enjoying the moment, you know. We're going to talk about some of the big plays you made. But first, I just want to ask you, can you evaluate the offense as a whole? I know you guys probably aren't going to walk uh, in those meeting rooms completely satisfied. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, we we have a lot to improve on. And it's like I, you know, it's like the song I've been singing is just, we need to do us. That's not what you see on Sunday. That's not what we look like in practice. It's, it's it gets confusing at, at times, but you know that's how we just got to come together. We got to figure it out what it is and do what we do in practice and just put it on Sunday. Well, a couple of plays that we want to highlight that were game changers that that I'm sure you're of course uh, remembering today. The first I want to talk about is earlier in the second quarter. You get a you leak out to the left a little bit. You have a catch. Nobody really around you. You rumble for 30 yards down the sideline. Tell me about that play a little bit. So, yeah, he brought me in, kind of disguised the defense. And, uh, yeah, I called the play. Said, said, huh, went across. I seen that whoever had me was kind of, like, leaked behind a little bit. So I knew if I was going to get the ball, I would have some room. I caught – he threw the ball to me. I looked. Nobody was really right there. And I was running down. It was, like, 15, 20 yards. And I seen a um, – I think it was a safety just, you know, hovering over about to make the tackle. And I could have kind of, I could have like did whatever, cut back, whatever. But I really just wanted to make that like, it didn't look as I want, it didn't look like as I wanted to, but I wanted to like really, like, you know, set a tone, like, like just hit him and, you know, instead of going out of bounds or cutting back, I really wanted to set like a tone for us 
to kind of get that momentum like, oh, yeah, like, here we go, you know, kind of establish that dominance. So, I mean, that's that's what I really wanted to get done on that play. Steelers Nation by now knows that you're not afraid to put your head down or put your shoulder down, that's for sure. And we, and we saw that on that play. You said that – was that play designed for you? You don't have to give us all the secrets. But you said that – Oh, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, cool. Another play that – might not have been designed for you. I'm just taking a, a, a guess with that one. It's probably going to ring a bell. You've seen it a lot today. Uh, we've seen it. Maybe maybe not you. But you got a, You guys got a third and 10 on your own 19, late in the second quarter. You get a little check down out there. You have a handful of Browns defenders in front of you. You pull some Mortal Kombat type shit, uh, and, you, and you pick up a first down, Jalen. Tell me about that play. You know, check protection, got out, uh, did my little check before I got out, sat sat in the space I'm supposed to. When he threw it, I caught it, and as I looked, there were two defenders, like, split. So instead of, like, trying to, you know, do something crazy, my mindset was really, like, just split them, like, go down the middle, hit, like, the soft spot of them two, and just keep wearing my feet, and, you know, got me. That's what helped get me there. You know what the next play was, right? Oh, yeah. That had me pumped. George started running. He ran all the way to the touchdown. I ran all the way down there with him. Then he started running back to our sideline. And I was too tired to keep running all the way chasing him. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just catch him when I catch him on the sideline. Yeah, yeah he threw everything off. And then he dipped on the sideline, too. He yeah. ran down the whole okay. field. <laughs> Did yeah. you ever catch up to him? <laughs> No, <laughs> I tried to make that turn, but I was like, okay, I'll just catch you when we get over there. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about a sponsor real quick, then I'm going to send it over to Jordan. Shopyins.com, man. I got this sweet new hat from them, repping the Y, of course, on there. They're the number one brand for Pittsburgh sports. Of course, all black and gold, all day, baby. A lot easier to buy Steelers gear after a Steelers victory. Use that code SICK15 for 15% off your entire purchase at shopyins.com. No minimum purchase necessary, which is absolutely huge. We're also doing a gift card giveaway. Check that out at Sick Pod Steelers on Twitter. Nobody predicted the correct score of the Steelers Browns, so it's going to carry over. It's going to add an extra ten dollars to this. It'll be twenty dollars this upcoming week. Jordan, sounds like a deal. So the run game was struggling. Obviously, what do you attribute to that, Jalen? What did I attribute to the run game? Yeah, like what 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 did you see that wasn't going right for you guys? I guess just like kind of um, I don't know um, watching the film, just maybe like being out of out of a position. Maybe mm-hmm. some of the linemen overset their blocks and anticipated the guy shooting. Instead, he like kind of shed them the other way. So I guess just that. Uh, I feel like. Yeah, it was really just when the the blockers had to get on their block to just, uh, you know, just over-anticipating sometimes. Going into the game, do you know how many touches you're going to get? Like, is it scripted, or do you guys just kind of just go with the flow? Yeah, basically just go with the flow. Whatever's working. Right. What was the message in the locker room after that victory? A win is a win. Um, he likes to say this thing saying, um, when we win, we say very little. When we lose, we say less. So, yeah, we got that win. You know, it was a division win. It was, it was a huge win. Uh, but, you know, get back in the lab and on to the next one. Yeah. Before I throw it back over to Mike, like the turnaround time, you know, you guys have to play on Sunday night again. Is that, you know, is that like, I'm, I'm guessing that's a little bit tough, especially on the body. Yeah, it can be, but I feel like with the right preparation, you know, you go through it every season. I mean, even though this is like my second season, but mm-hmm. I'm assuming, you know, it. it I mean, you've been playing football your whole life, so I, yeah, I'm sure this is like your like 17th season since Pee Wee's. Oh, let's... right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but we usually always play on Saturday in college. Like I don't think, yeah, that, I don't think we ever played on Friday or something, but. Yeah, I mean, it comes with the territory, so you got to do what you got to do. For sure. And the Steelers' defense, your defense, I should say, 
did what they had to do. No question about it. I know it's a, a collective team effort at the end of the day, but I'm going to allow you to, to gloat a little bit real quick about having guys like TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith on your squad. And how much does that make you better, right, when you're going against them every day in, in, in camp and practice, things of that nature? Oh, it just, you know, it just raised our sword for the fight for sure. Going against those guys every day. Uh, you know, like E Rob, that was my really biggest competitor in the camp and I feel like he made me he made me a better player. You know, as far as dealing with linebackers, T J Watt, of course, you know, High Smith having those edges, giving us a realistic look of how it would be in, you know, a pro pro football game. Uh it, it's good. It's good having those guys around, kinda learn from them, see what they see, just See what like kind of tells they tell in the backfield, just getting those uh picks. Yeah, E Rob, of course, referring to Landon Roberts, and and you know want to help everybody understand. Of course, out there you mentioned it. Inside backers are generally who uh, running backs are going against, and of course you have your edges. But we're not we're not taking anything away from T.J. Watt and uh, Alex Highsmith, as I'm sure they could play inside backers too. I mean they're they're so good. These guys can. Uh, can be out there doing doing whatever, honestly, on the field. All right, a little bit of a tough transition here, Jalen. You're you're running back. You can empathize with these guys. It's relatable, I'm sure. But um, when a guy like Nick Chubb goes down like that, what, what's kind of going through your 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 body? Oh, you you don't you don't wish that on your worst enemy like that. That's bad. You you don't you don't like seeing those type of things. Like yeah, it's a rivalry. That's the opposing team, but you don't ever want to see stuff like that happen. And it's sad to see that happen, especially because that's one of the, you know, that's one of the best backs in the league. And I'm sure a lot of people look up to him. And I mean, I look up to him in a way. So just seeing that sucks. Um, yeah, it, it just, I don't like seeing that kind of stuff. So when I saw it, no. it like made, it gave me a sick feeling inside. Personally, I couldn't watch it. I, I didn't watch it. Yeah. I know they showed the replay on the big screen and the crowd, but I, I also, you know, from yeah. a TV perspective, uh, how classy were your fans to like the Chubb chant and cheering him? Uh, I feel I like that, that shows a lot. With that. I was actually, yeah, impressed with that. You don't see that every day. You really don't. Nah, you don't. So, I mean, that just proved to me we really do got the best fans in the world. A lot of our viewers. Mm -hmm. I think would be really interested to learn about a running back's recovery process post game. We, we obviously had guys like Chris Wormley and High Smith on last year and a handful of defenders, but we never really got to talk to, to many offensive weapons. You're taking a beating out there just like everybody else. But it, tell me about a week after taking a beating, ice bats, heating pads. What's a recovery like for a running back like you? Yeah, so I got to go in early in the morning. Um, like, if you want to start, okay, let's say play on a Sunday. Um, say Monday. Monday we go in for meetings from 1 to 5. I'll go in earlier to get, like, treatment on whatever kind of feels like, you know, any leakage I got. Go to meetings after that. You know, go home. I have this, like, little slant board that I got for, like, my Achilles. I just do, like my little exercises in my room, ice down at the end of the night. I got ice, ice packs in my uh, freezer. So, yeah, after that, Tuesdays we have off, go back in the building, do some rehab. I usually get, like, two massages a week, uh, preferably Thursday and uh, Saturday, um, or Tuesday and Thursday. And then uh, – you know, I, I have this chiropractor dude that comes and works on me about two times a week. So it's like, it's, yeah. It, 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 it's a it's lot. Like, yeah, it is a lot. I remember as a kid grabbing the frozen peas out the, out the freezer, <laughs> putting them on my shoulder after pitching yeah, a game yeah. with my elbow or something. Come on, man. Everybody had the frozen peas. Nobody yeah. wanted to eat them anyway. Nobody Till this day. Nobody wanted, to eat them, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted to eat them. Yeah. That's why they were always there. If we're pulling, pulling, that's the reason we're pulling frozen pizza out and putting it on your arm because that, yeah. that was gone in like a day. <laughs> Anything frozen. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we talked about you guys have a quick turnaround. What do you know about Vegas and what problems do you think that they'll present to you guys? Um, I haven't taken a look at Vegas. I'm not going to lie, but I was going to start that probably like tonight. Yeah. 
And what do you guys say? You know, I know each game is different and the preparation is different, but what do you guys need to do to win? Uh, if you had to pinpoint it. Yes. Just execute and stick together, do us, you know, travel light, meaning you mess up on the play, don't let it, don't don't mm -hmm. keep that with you, you know, just let it go on to the next play. Like, we made mistakes. As much people have seen or as great of a game as y'all think I had, there were things that I could have done better. And I knew that in the game, but it's really about the next play. Like, I couldn't sit there and think about that play. What if I did that? It's really about the next play. Don't think too much. Just go out there and ball out. Is that something that Tomlin implements in you guys? Kind of not the sulk, like, you know, you, you get a fumble, you drop a ball, you know, something doesn't – the yeah. wrong route, whatever it may be. Just kind of just, you know, let it go on to the next one. Yes, he – yeah, he tells us that. And before I throw it back over to Mike and we get you out of here, uh, you, you're going to score a touchdown on Sunday, right? Yeah. There you have it. Boom. You heard it here first. Jalen, I got a I got a fan question today for you. I'm really excited. We're gonna start doing some of these because I asked this on Twitter. Um and we and we get a lot of them. And heck, you might you might say this uh was yesterday, but I don't want to steal your thunder. Ian at Ian MCQ eighty seven. Favorite win you've been a part of since being a Steeler? The Ravens last year, the second nice. Ravens game. Hey, that game that game was a it was a good game and it was it was a hard I love the games where you really gotta I was there, I remember grind. you were yeah. yeah we really gotta grind for the win, you know. Like all you know, Kenny rolls to the right and hits Melody. Yeah, the yeah, that game. The we were running the ball, we were kind of controlling it how we wanted to control it. Um yeah, it came down to the last second. Kenny threw it out of Najee. Yeah, it was it was fun. Nothing says great teammate. Like that answer there from Jalen Warren. Because you could have picked the Panthers game for an obvious reason. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that was cool. Yeah. But for those that I don't know, we got in the end. I love when the, the first whole, time. I love when the whole team is eating. Like yeah. they say, we all eat. And I don't know, I could have the best game in the world, but I wouldn't feel as good as a team win, you know? Or I don't we care had some, if I do. Great, and I and yeah. lose. I don't care. Man, we have some great. I'm gonna call them Warrenisms. There are no more Tomlinisms. <laughs> some Warren. Yeah. That one with the sword. I should have wrote that down. That what uh, was that one? Say the sword. We need the sword one again. The sword one. <laughs> that's actually that's, from the facility. They sharp. They sharpen our sword. I, I'm telling you, I, I say some of the things I'm. <laughs> I'm right. I'm in there writing notes, and they say some. I'm like. It's a good one. Don't <laughs> use that. So Gotta every week that. we're gonna need one of these warnisms. That's warnisms. That's just one a week. We might have to have a new segment, Sammy and LL. We had so we had worm association with Chris Wormley, which which we would throw out a, a word and he would just throw some comments on it. Like if you guys were playing the Browns, we would say, uh, you know, something like uh, Amari Cooper, and he would throw some words on it. We might have to have a word in the segment where we just say, all right, hit us with a war in his own. I don't know. You up for it, Taylor? Yeah, I mean, I'll think of pressure. <laughs> no pressure, man. Yeah. Just right, just I'll, right I'll bring I'll out the notepad. For five minutes trying to figure out what to say. No, bring out the notepad. You could, we, we won't oh, tell yeah. anybody bring if you sneak notepad. a few. <laughs> hey, always great hanging out with you. Good We're luck here. this Sunday, and uh, I'll be looking for that touchdown. Just let me know, you know, what celebration you're going to do, and we'll be ready, man. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, stay man. healthy, Jalen. Yeah, stay healthy, most sure. importantly. We'll catch Always. you soon, man. All right, thank you all. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you, man. Hey, Jordan, I do want to have you talk a little bit about Brushers and Beans uh, because Jalen Warren's show – is sponsored by this awesome, awesome coffee place in the Berg. Yeah. Caffeine and Created Brushes and Beans Cafe. Visit them at 4550 William Penn Highway in Murraysville. Go see Mark over there. Uh, again, just a great, um, just a great family man doing some great stuff over there. 
get the JY special, the double shot espresso. Tell them that the sick hey. podcast Steeler Crazy sent you. You'll get your day started off right. You can never go wrong at Brushes and Beans Cafe in Murraysville. We needed it last night, staying up to about midnight watching football. Uh, yeah, that's what I did need, brushes and beans, most definitely. <laughs> it's um, a good problem to have. But yeah, I kind of wanted to touch too on, you know, some of, you know, Mike Tomlin's press conference when, you know, asked about, you know, everyone heard it, I'm sure, um, you know, the Matt Canada chance. I'm not really going to get too much into it. You know, he kind of, again, it's a it's an entertainment at the end of the day, like he said, this is sports entertainment. Um, he doesn't really focus too much on the fans. He appreciates the passion, but, um, you know, doesn't look too much into it. But uh, it definitely, um, you know, you can't ignore what's going on right now. Um, so, you know, just if you wanted to, shut, you know, talk about that and just, you know, anything else that stuck out to you from his presser. Yeah, it's never easy to get done talking to a great offensive player for the Pittsburgh Steelers and then talk about the frustration with Matt Canada, but it's completely warranted. Um, and let's keep it real. I see there what you did guys. there. Yeah, you like Warren <laughs> Tid. Warren that Tid. Not a Warrenism. Carry on. Sport, but Carry on. There were two guys on the Steelers' offense last night that I thought were really good, um, and that were George Pickens and Jalen Warren. And you got to have more than two guys yeah. play well on offense to win football games. This team has two offensive touchdowns through two weeks. Um, I would like to see more snaps for Jalen. It's nothing against Najee Harris. I just would like to mix it up a little bit more. I'd like to see Matt Canada mix it up a little more for Kenny Pickett. Maybe uh, chill out on the jet sweeps and the uh, quarterback uh, options there towards the end of the game before the Steelers punted that couple of plays that uh, went for negative yards. So, yeah, it's no, it's an elephant in the room, and it's a big elephant. It's Dumbo with those ears. You know, this is the biggest elephant of all time. And uh, But like we said before, it's a win. And silver lining might be the fact that this division right now is banged up. The Bengals are yeah. going to. The Steelers are better than the Browns in my estimation. They did a lot to lose the game potentially yesterday, and they still didn't. Um, so, you know, it's a little early to say it could, down, could come down yeah. to the Ravens and the Steelers, but – Hey, that's one and two in the North right now. Who knows? Maybe yeah. the division isn't as good as we thought. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I and I think to me, it's like I think that Steeler Nation is so passionate that like it feels like I think I told you this the other day, like it's gonna be week three. I feel like it's been like 30 years since the Steelers season started. I think that we're just so <laughs> invested. Yeah. You know, I know I'm tired. I, <laughs> yeah, like I'm tired, like I'm tired of dealing with other people at this point and and just kind of let it like, yes, like is there there's a lot that you know needs that has question marks on it on this Steeler, especially with the offense, but it's week three. And it's like, do you think that the Bengals are like ready to like, you know, no, set the stadium no on fire and be like, okay, like, you know, I think they, they, they went 12 and four after starting, you know, whatever they started last year. Um, It's not, is it time to be worried? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of question marks, but I, I just don't, I just think again, I'm going to have to say this every episode, just, just relax, you know, sit back on the recliner, get some popcorn and just relax because honestly, Steeler Nation, it, it's it's going to be OK. I want to give a few updates to Steeler Nation. If you're watching this today, so you've been at work all day or just avoiding football because I've had football overload myself. Um, Is there some injury thing? updates? <laughs> yes. I hate <laughs> Thursday night football, by the way, for what it's worth, because yeah. I want like a whole week to digest football yeah. and Get away I like the 4 p.m. The games because I can get I can get done what I need to get done. And then I sit down right. and like I'm still in bed by my bedtime. Thursday night football, it's, it's too fast for me. I don't need the week to start just yet. Give me Sunday. Give me Monday football. Anyway, uh, Steelers injury update for anybody who's tuning in and didn't get to catch Mike Tomlin's press conference. Gunnar Oshesky, uh, Oshesky being evaluated for a concussion. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, good news on his front. He went to the hospital last night, AGH, with potential chest contusion, which is really scary. But – Mike Tomlin said it was precautionary and that he's very optimistic in Minka, whether that means he'll play on a short week uh, to be determined. But for what it's worth, it doesn't seem long-term whatsoever. Um, and then Landon Roberts had a stinger. Uh, who knows once more, not going to take any guesses if he'll play on a short week, but another guy who's not going to be long-term. So injury report, honestly, not in bad shape considering week one, they lost Deontay Johnson, Cam Hayward, uh, among others. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's not just us. It's, you know, other teams. We've seen what happened with the Browns, or the Jets, um, just to name a few. So, I mean, it's it's life in the NFL. And at the end of the day, we just wish that everyone recovers and, you know, stays healthy, especially our guy number 30, Jalen Warren. As as he uh, alluded to, uh, he's going to get that touchdown. So, um, hey, yeah. do what you please. Do what you please and do us a favor as well. First of all, stop down and see John. At Steel City Wheelhouse, okay? We can't stress this enough. Listen, it's about to be winter in the Berg, okay? Get that means slick tired. roads. That means, you know, snow, of course, and sleet and hail, whatever Pittsburgh winter brings. So we'll make sure you guys stop down there. Uh, see John at Steel City Wheelhouse in Murraysville, right, Jordan? Uh, and, and, of course, what? SteelCityWheelhouse.com. You can check them out yeah. as well. And make sure you hit shopians.com for all of your great Steelers gear. And get yourself some coffee before the, another Sunday night game at Brushes and Beans. We got to stay up late again watching this deal. Listen, right we now. have it. We have it all on. down packed for you. You just have to implement it into your schedule. And I'm telling you, it will be life changing. So stay safe. And uh, Steeler Nation, we're back in the whim column. Let's ride. Sammy, take it away. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.